Let me welcome you, my dear students, to another exciting journey of learning. This is Virtual University of Pakistan offering you a course hands-on. How to develop skills, and we have named this course Developing Management Skills. Of course, it's a management course, and I expect, my dear students, that you're coming from diverse backgrounds, having business administration or public administration or management-related degrees and background. Some of you might be working for the last many, many years. Some of you might be new, fresh. Just having a 16 years degree, maybe from the business-related field or non-business-related field. It does not matter. The nature of this course is that we like to learn those skills, hands-on skills, which will make us successful as a person, as a professional, as a manager, as a citizen, wherever we are living. So are you ready then? Ready to take a journey? Journey of discovery, journey of exploration, journey of knowing what can you do, what can I do, and what can we do together to make some change? Let's begin then with the name of Lord, who is really the source of absolute knowledge. He's so magnificent, so merciful, that he, the Lord, always makes sure that human being learns those skills which will make him or her successful in this world. And of course, the word hereafter. It's a continuation and it's a journey of learning the skills. When we call these management skills, it means we're looking into the discipline of management, which has really become a superset. See how you call financial management, marketing management, brand management, strategic management, and all these areas of business functions require from you a manager, a worker, a knowledge worker, a professional, an engineer, a doctor, even a housewife. That how one should put into practice those skills which are known as management skills. I really feel pleased to interact with you and share my experience of the last 40 years. And I have been practicing these skills, although I did not know that these are management skills way back there. Even when I finished my PhD in 1978, from Michigan State University, and practicing these skills, interacting with people at work, relating with people at home, in the market, I learned these skills are very important. And in this journey, even after PhD, interacting with students all around the globe, many years in U.S., in Australia, in Singapore, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Middle East, Pakistan, I found out that the difference one makes in the career development, in the professional development, in the successful life in the organization is how you present yourself, how you behave yourself, what is your attitude and aptitude towards learning. Time have changed. From the time I got my PhD in 1978, I did not mention my name. I think some of you might have taken management courses more than one. At least one, everybody has taken. Principles of management. But let me, for the newcomers, introduce myself. My name is Rashid Kosar. As I just shared with you, I got my Ph.D. from Michigan State University in 1978. In all these years, I've been working at different levels of management in the corporate sector, in the scientific sector, 
in academia, outside academia, as an advisor, as a presenter, as a consultant, in many capacities. And I'll share with you and bring stories around the world that how managers, how managing has changed over time, number one, and how diversity has come in the market, in the office, and even at home. Because when I say diversity, it means diversity in attitude, diversity in thinking, diversity in technology, diversity in learning. But one thing is for sure, the lesson I took, please keep on learning. Some people call it lifelong learning, continuous learning. Change is constant. You better make sure that you be adaptable and flexible. You better make sure that you have the capacity and capability that while you interact with different people, you will be able to present your viewpoint. You must have that skill. And I'll share with you at least one story of my life when it was a very hard and difficult negotiation. I wanted to have only five minutes because I knew that the person I want to speak with, either he does not have time for me or he does not have the feeling of the importance of the agenda which is important for me or for my university. But somehow I managed that five points only before that person leaves his office. I'll try to make sure that I put my point of view across. See how I'm, I'm using my management skills? Only five minutes I was given. I start my negotiation with the person who was the head of the faculty development in one of the leading universities in Europe, known as Harvard of Europe. Now think of it, being a management student. 250 PhDs working under one roof. And here it is, head of the faculty development, no concern with faculty development of those faculty members which are outside Europe. This is their scope. After three minutes, he started listening. In the fourth minute, he offered me a cup of tea. And you know, thereafter, we sat for more than an hour. And I made sure that at least one person should be part of that team which will be given the training in the next year. You have to be negotiating, negotiating in a way, respecting the other person's agenda and the importance and making sure that you also have the skill. It goes through. You are successful. So my dear students, ladies and gentlemen, while welcoming you on the platform of the Virtual University of Pakistan, I like to emphasize on the principle that conceptual learning is important. It brings depth in your learning. But how you practice it, how it changes your behavior, how you interact with people, it makes and breaks a company. It makes and breaks a family. It makes and breaks an organization. And let me just say one more point. People leave organizations not because of the organization. People leave the organization because of the person you call your boss. It's the behavior of the boss. So boss also has to learn some management skills. You also have to learn. I also have to learn. And in the 21st century, we will see 
how can be a successful manager, a successful person, a successful human being in 24 hours a day, wherever we are. And let me also share one more thing, that the content which I will share with you in this course, I'm glad that the book which I chose is a book which is used almost all over the world. A couple of universities I've seen in Canada, many universities in the United States. And in fact, when I visited the University of Technology, Sydney, to offer a course to MBA students there, another course was offered to me if I can take the second trip. And that was this developing management skills. And I'll share with you, it's a beautifully written book, has its many editions. Contexts are changed, Asian context, Asia-Pacific context, North American context. Wherever these human beings are, management skills are universal. So are you ready then to take this journey of learning? I'm sure you are. And so am I. I think it will be a nice sailing together. As I shared with you, developing of the management skill is needed. How can you manage your life? How can you manage your family? How can you manage your friendship? How can you manage while at office? And at the same time, how can you manage your relationship, the one above with the one below and across? Remember, somebody you call maybe your boss, somebody your colleague, somebody who is reporting to you. So number one, we like to learn those skills which will helpful to us at the personal level, at the professional level. And then how these skills will be important and helping us in our relationship with others at office, in the market. Serving the markets. And let's not forget, even when you go to the mosque or church, you are interacting with others. It really brings value in your relationship. It adds value. At the end of the day, that's why I said that development of these skills, hands-on skills, learning by heart, learning by mind, and learning by hand, all three are important. But I found out that research tells us that high IQ, intelligent quotient, alone is not good enough. It does not guarantee you that it will bring success in the life as well as work. Well, if it's a question of high IQ, you can program the robot. It will give you excellent productivity as far as the work and the task is concerned, maybe Programmed task will be done in an excellent fashion by robot. But then we are talking of success in the life. So this means we need to learn those skills which can improve. Remember I said continuous learning. Which can improve, number one, our concepts, conceptual learning. For example, you learn in the principles of management. What are the managerial roles? What are the functions one has to perform? And of course, those functions, if you remember, I called polka in that course. And I'm sure all of you have taken that course. Because I will be building and developing on the concept which you learned in that, in that course. And other courses of marketing, accounting and finance, strategy, operations. But while you use those concepts, we will put that into practice in this course. How this practice will change your behavior. Remember, I'm talking of behavior. What you present in terms of action. How you present your body language. What are your gestures? That makes a difference. That tells the other person, how long can you hang on there? that shows the other person how you value his or her values. And how are you ready 
when the culture changes, when the language changes, when the food changes. Remember, it's a global word. Time has changed. And when the time has changed, if I do not update and change and improve my skills, I'm sorry, then I'm outdated. No relevance with the market. So if one has to be successful, if one has to be someone who is adding value, if one would like to be remembered by people, respected by people, liked by people, loved by people, well, then it's a behavior which you and me will show in the office, in the home, in the market, while dealing with customer and clients, while interacting with the boss, while sharing your part of the story with your colleagues. That's why I'm saying, Aiki alone is not good enough. We will learn in this course that what should you blend with IQ and some of you might know EQ and we will see what is the role of EQ in developing these management skills. But before we speak of the management skills, we are sitting in 21st century. We are working in 21st century. Remember I said technology has changed the world. So does this have an impact on the skills which you require to do the work efficiently? To bring the productivity and profitability and decision making in an effective fashion? My answer to it, yes. What are these three mega trends which I like you to remember? Please take a note of it. Number one, technology. And especially we are speaking of information and communication technology. The issues of performance, the issues of connectivity, the issues of portability, Web 2, Web 3, Web 4. Something is here, something you should get ready. See how technology is transforming the way you think, the way you live, the way you interact, and the way you perform. Remember I said, I completed my PhD in 1978. Time was different. Technology was different. And if I do not transform myself, I'm out of the market. Believe me, these smartphones, intelligent workstations, the way you deal with information and communication technology, it tells the other person how updated you are. I was traveling in Middle East while giving presentations, interacting with students. And I realized students are even observing what are the megapixels of my camera which I'm using. I realized you should change. That means when the technology in terms of price is getting cheaper. Hardwares are available. Remember I said web 2, 3 and 4? You need to learn how it will add value into you and your life. But this trend will keep on changing the way markets deliver their products. the way prices are being set, the way delivery channels are being established. And let's not forget how consumers and clients and the citizens are providing their feedback. In minutes and hours, sometimes even seconds. See, we're not talking of months and weeks and days now. Technology has shortened the life cycle. We're talking of hours and minutes and seconds. In seconds, the information can go around the world seven times through technology. So if that's the kind of world in which we are living, 
How are you, my dear students, ladies and gentlemen? How are you developing those skills which makes you relevant? And you know, why we are speaking of relevancy? Answer is very simple. You tell me. Why I'm saying relevancy? Something which is outdated, knowledge which is outdated, technology which is outdated, software, hardware which is outdated, process which is outdated, not relevant now. Well, if you don't go into the second loop and third loop of learning, maybe we'll talk about it when we speak of learning. And how do you learn and change your concept? Remember, we said you need to learn some concepts. That's very important. Theory. Management theory. Theory which presents to us some skills. But then that's not good enough. Theory must be placed into practice. Behavior. How you show you can do it. How you show you can walk with it. How you show you can present with it. How you show that you can convince, persuade, influence the customer, the consumer, the boss, your colleague, your brother, your sister, your wife, your father, your mother, and someone at home, someone in the market who is willing to work with you, who is willing to keep you. So that's why I'm saying, my dear students, when we speak of Web 2 and 3 and 4, even technology is changing. Look at the memory which is available to you, which you can put in your pocket or purse. Look at the speed which is available to you, which you can buy with a cheaper price. Look at the facilities and those apps which are provided to you through the smartphones. And if, and that's a big if, if you're not skillful, if you're not capable, if you're not managing the technology, if you're not managing your mobile phone, if you're not managing your learning in the best way possible, then you're left behind, you're outdated. That is the difference where someone is paid more as compared to someone is paid less. And when we speak of paying or the payment or the salary, why not? That's how we work for. That's at the end of the day, very important. So one of the purpose of taking and presenting this course would be how these skills can add value into your life, into your career, into your salary and paycheck, into your benefits. You be happy. Your office is happy. Your clients and customers are happy. You stay in business. You stay in job. Second trend, my dear students, mega trend, is the information and the knowledge, quantity and quality, which is going into work. You, to me, you are all knowledge workers. And those of you who might have taken the course on knowledge management, they remember and they can recall. Look at all these websites and portals and see how many are coming every day and see how much information is available at your tips. And those who are not able to use the search engine even to find where the best pizza or the best burger or the best fries are available. And cheaper is available. Information. You want to go and take a vacation and you want to find out that I want to be associated with work and I want to take a vacation. Is the internet facility available there? If not, can I take wireless gadget in my pocket? And speaking of Pakistan... All these wireless gadgets, the whole country is covered. It all depends where you are, how do you want to perform your work. 
It does not matter anymore, my students, my dear students, my professionals. It does not matter anymore that you are in a village, you are in a city, you are in Shekhupura or in Mardan or in Shikarpur. Go to even smaller village. It does not matter that you're sitting in a small village of Faisalabad or maybe in Balochistan, remote areas. The information which is available to you through email or through internet or through websites will keep you busy even you are at vacation. Now, well, you can take it as a blessing or disguise. You're taking the work wherever you are. Well, that also makes you responsible enough, competent and dynamic enough that are you skillful? Can you plan what work to leave behind and what work to take home? Or can you skillful enough that you can do work from home? I know many, many knowledge workers now, even in Pakistan. Of course, it's going on in developed world for many years now. But even in Pakistan, they're doing their work from home. So it's no longer a barrier or a constraint. Because the work has become even more knowledgeful and information-based and knowledge-based. So if it's no longer a laborer's work, it requires thinking. So thinking will be wherever you will be. So if you are provided with information, you will make your decisions accordingly. So life is complex, but then complexity, who will make it simple? You. That's why we are saying you need to learn those skills that you bring complexity out of life and out of work and you find peace at the edge of chaos. Complexity and the Peace at the edge of chaos, it's possible. But then it's based on information. A third trend is the trend of globalization. Can you stop it, my dear students? Can you stop it? I'm sorry, we cannot. If we are living in the markets which are liberalized and deregulated, if we are living in the world which is every day becoming borderless, like you're taking these lectures, these presentations, these videos from Virtual University of Pakistan. That's what I'm saying. The content which I'm presenting, you can immediately compare with the content, say, with the other professors around the world, global world. So the education market, the market of the university is globalized. Products are globalized. Services are globalized. You can buy whatever you like. Maybe a course. Maybe your food items. Maybe your books. Look at how many sites are available. Maybe you are a retailer or a student or a professional or a doctor. Or maybe you are a manufacturer. You can go on the net and see what products and services are available and at what price. And... Can it be delivered to you wherever you are? That's why I'm saying resources are also being globalized. And when we say resources, well, maybe resources which are required for production, raw materials. Resources, human resources. Resources, customer resources, relationship resources. Maybe you will never know your customers are coming from where in the world? Does not matter. In the global world, as long as you know where you are connected, as long as you know where you are present, isn't this we call 24-7 world? Well, that's, that's how things are. So if you have those skills, for example, a person like me, a PhD of 1978, talking of those skills where 24-7 mindset was not available, where the month and the week and the day schedule was more prevalent. Well, 
skills which are required for 24-7, skills which are required for hours and minutes and seconds, skills which are required for you to be visible, skills that the customers would like to you or your company's representative, and if you are consultant, to be available on the web wherever you are. Technology is available. Connectivity is available. Question is, are you using those resources? Remember we said those skills which will make you successful in the home, in the office, in the life, in the relationships. That's why speaking of the relationship, globalization has also brought in what we call social networks. Look at all these social networking websites available to you. And when I speak of the Generation Y in a minute, today or maybe in the next session or maybe in the next module, trend has changed. People like you, young professionals, you are connected every second. SMS are going and coming, regardless which language are you using. Language is not important because the language is the language of relationship. As long as this language keeps you related and sustainable and happy, you are successful. So that's why I'm saying you need to manage those skills which will make you successful and happy and the one who are related with you. And social networks in this global world are very important. Virtual University of Pakistan's all these videos, you tell me they're not available or not on YouTube, on the social sites. All of these students around the world, they're using them. So in this world where social networks have become so important, Companies and the managers are using the networks, again, to take care of their profitability and performance and sales and revenue, looking into new strategies, opening new channels, and speaking to the customers and consumers or their friends or families in a completely different way. So when the business models are changing, my dear students, my dear professionals, when the business models are changing, how the work is being performed, would you not like to also change your behavior the way, is being, the way the work is being performed? I'm sure you will be ready. So that's how in every session we will raise certain questions. Why? Why do you, ha why do you have to do this? What do you have to do it? And how will you do it? And when you speak of how, that means that concept which you learned, you want to put it into practice. And when you look into practice, you would like to see, in terms of practice, where you are now, and implementing these concepts with the new knowledge, new ideas, new information, what is the new level of skill set? which you acquire while you go through this course. That's what I'm saying. Why? Why raises questions? Why should you learn these management skills? I gave the answer. I want to be successful. Won't you? And if so, then you should develop these skills. Developing of these skills brings me to a completely different mindset. Because on one hand, change is constant. On the other hand, we ask for sustainability. On one hand, we want to be successful, peaceful. On the other hand, we are asking ourselves to be present 24-7. I call it a paradox. So what is the paradox of our time? What is the paradox of the time in which you and me are living? Let's try to resolve it. 
Let us try to understand it. Because understanding it will help you to develop those skills which will be required to be successful in the months and years to come. Isn't that true? So let us look at it. What are those paradoxes of our time? And I'll give you time then to think why these paradoxes are there. And if they are there, how can you resolve it? What is the best management practice you can put into practice? What is the skill you can use when you want to resolve, when you want to make your vision clear? For example, I've taken this statements, these are not mine, I'll let you know in a minute who is asking us what. But speaking of these principles of relationship, skills which are required by you and me in our own life, in other words for myself, for yourself, and skills which are required to be related with the others, regardless who are they. So these principles of effective relationship, of course they are there for a very long time. The history of humankind illustrates that these principles have always been practiced. But especially in 21st century, what we know and what we demonstrate. Knowing something is the concept learning. Demonstrating it means as a practice. Behavior. You show it. So what we know and what we demonstrate do not always match. Is that true? What we learn and we, what we put into practice do not match. Always do not match. And when it can match, it will bring value. It will bring profitability. It will bring premium price for the knowledge or for the work or for the idea or for the service which you deliver. George Corlin described this paradox as follows. Very interesting. And I read and I quote, The paradox of our time in history is, we have taller buildings but shorter tempers, wider freeways and motorways but narrow viewpoints. My dear students, we spend more but have less. We buy more, but enjoy less. Mr. Carlin says, we have bigger houses and smaller families. Paradox. More conveniences, but less time to enjoy. We have more degrees in our hand, but less common sense. More knowledge, but less judgment. More experts, but more problems. More medicine, but less wellness. Mr. Carlin says, we eat too much, we smoke too much, we spend too recklessly, we laugh too little, we drive too fast, we get too angry and too quickly, stay night too late, get too tired, read too seldom, watch TV too much, or maybe stay on the web too much and pray too seldom. We have multiplied our possessions, but reduced our values. Mr. Carlin says, we talk too much. We love too seldom. And we hate too often. He says, we have learned how to make a living, but not a life. We have added years to life, but not a life to years. We have been all the way to the moon and back, but have trouble crossing the street to meet our neighbors. Mr. Carlin says, my dear students, we have conquered outer space, but do not know the inner space. We have done larger things, but not better things. We have cleaned up the air, but polluted the soul. We have split the atom, but not our prejudice. We write more, but learn less. We plan more, but accomplish less. He says, we have learned to rush but not to wait. We build more computers to hold more information, to produce more copies than ever, but have less communication. 
These are the times of fast foods, but slow digestion. Tall men and short character. And tall women and short character. Steep profits and shallow relationships. Mr. Carlin says these are the times of world peace, but domestic warfare. More leisure, but less fun. More kinds of food, but less nutrition. These are the days of two incomes, but more divorces. Of fancier houses, but broken homes. He says, these are the days of quick trips, disposable diapers, throwaway morality, one night stands, overweight bodies, and pills that do everything from cheer to quiet to kill. It's a paradox, my dear students. He says it's a time when there is much in the show window and nothing in the stockroom. A time when technology can bring this lecture to you, my lecture to you, and a time when you can choose either to share this insight with yourself or with someone else or just hit the delete. Everything is gone. It's a paradox. It's there. You are a generation Y. I agree. It's a 21st century. I agree. These are the mega trends. I agree. But we need to learn those skills that we can live in this paradox successfully and happily and bring life to work and bring happiness to our life. We enjoy the relationships, relationship with ourselves, relationship with our customers and consumers, relationship with the colleagues, relationship at home, relationship in the office. So we are one. You may call it manager. You may call it non-manager. We are a person, a person who is a global person. But he or she can do it better with better management skills. Thank you.